Matt from North Siberia, your gifts, Kate, Barge People, say goodbye to $100. And we do have a key here, which is the lock key. We do have the voice cylinder, which we'll play in the train when we get a chance. A hook and a wine bottle, so I'm really excited about that. Let's head back this way. We need to run a little quicker, please, Kate. Come on, Kate, get up those stairs. Now, uh, I think it was in here somewhere. Hmm. Mm, sure, let's go this way. I don't remember where that was. I think it might have been at the end of this. Oh, phone call. Hello? Hello? Hey, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I saw this fantastic fur coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far, especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little... I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin. Okay, Mom. Enough of that. It's embarrassing. Let's go this way. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it's this thing right here, isn't it? What is this thing? Makes me think of Krollmeister. Uh, hmm. That looks broken. Broken's bad. Uh, in case of problems, contact the following number. What number? Oh, I see. Should I write that down? Two, seven, six. Six, six, seven, four, two. I can use my cell number, right? Hmm. Uh, what do we got here? Ah, I need my key though. There we are. Uh, the instructions are written in a language I don't recognize. Well, that's not good. The instructions are written in a language I don't recognize. Okay, so we gotta make a phone call here then. Uh, oh, I can't make a phone call from this view. Maybe I can make it from here. So I gotta call. Two, seven. Seven, four, two. Send. Hello? Welcome to the East Block Control Center. To start, press the number sign. Number sign. Your combination number is not valid. Ah. Uh, okay. 
Your combination number is not valid. What combination number? Um, I don't know what to do. Am I still on the call? Hello? 911? If you are using the Haltenberg lock, press 1. If you are using the Morloff lock, press 2. If you are using the Conning Pass lock, press 3. If you are using the Barrackstadt lock, press 4. To return to the last command, press the number sign. Ah, here we go. Hit 4. If you want to raise the water level, press 1. If you want to lower the water level, press 2. To return to the last command, press the number sign. I think I want to hit 2. Lower it. You want to lower the water level in the Barrackstadt lock? Yes, I to do. To confirm your choice, press star. To return to the previous command, press the number sign. Start is. Your request has been logged. Unfortunately, our regional technician is currently on holiday and no replacement is available. We will reply to your request within 48 hours. In case of an emergency, please operate the lock system manually. We apologize for delays to our service. What? Really now? Well, maybe we can just try the same thing. Star 42? Aha! So wheat. We lowered it, we lowered it. Barge people. I am a lock operator. A smooth lock operator. Where's our friends? Is it straining? Do I have to go all the way back outside? I don't know, we'll try it. No, uh, yes. Birds are so chirpy. Chipper and chirpy. That's better, it's quiet out here. So 42 and 41 are your controls here. Hi there. I did your dirty work again. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? Yep. Right, I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. Gott verdomme! Das ist eine echte Ladies. Alle etwa, range alle Dingen und obligados die Dame. Ach, set content und zurück again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up. We hurry to travel again. Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay? They better do it. I mean, I paid them $100 and I'm manipulating lock controls here. They better not, like, leave me hanging here. Kate's gonna be sad. Come on, Kate. Run up the stairs like Rocky. Let's go. Continue to run this way. And past the station master, who is busy, air quotes. Okay, so I guess I just raised them, right? One lock at a time. Forty-one star.
Are we done? Can I go this way to see them? Maybe? No, wait, this way, isn't it? I think it's this way. How do I... Or is it this way? I'm all turned around now. No, 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 no. No, that's not it. Station Master. I wonder if he has anything new to share with us. Hello there. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? Um, uh, train? It seems that your superiors object to the presence of my train in the station. Not exactly easy going, are they? Uh, well, it's, it's not that they're difficult to please, but I find that the less I have to do with them, the better things are. Give a drift. Birds, more peaceful than employers. And respect for the regulations. Now that brings peace of mind. Okay. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barokstad, miss. I've been here, like, for a day or two. Well, maybe not that long, but... I guess we should... I don't know, walk this way. We have to talk to our friends here. I think they have to, like, tow us or something. We have to wind this train up. It's like on a spring. Hi there. Oh, there you are. Hey there. On the boat. Da, da. Barge on other side. You still need us? Yeah. We sure do. Need your help. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak. Lokokokobitchen. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Hop! Catch it up! Okay. Nice toss. Um. We gotta pick it up or something, don't we? That's going to work. It looks like something's missing. Ah, that's what our hook is for. Let's hook up our train. Awesome. So yeah, this, we're working together like a team. There's the winder right there. Sweet. Let's go. These guys are amazing. That's totally worth $100. Where's that winder now? Why would the winder be way out here, not like in the train station? Oh well. Come on, Kate, get out there. You're out there. Let's do some work here. Oh. Hello. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Potts. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukol at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Really? I walked all this way out here, and now I gotta turn around? Okay... Fine... Let's go, let's go! Come on, Kate. Where's the fast travel button? I keep asking for that. K, 
Kate needs an Uber to take her uh, to the university. Nope, she's all on foot. Well, I know where the lecture hall is, so that's a good thing. to go inside. Automaton Bandstand, you are amazing. Way, please. Where's that sleeping ah, guy? There you are, Miss Walker. Good, good. Uh, take a seat quickly. I'm impatient to start my lesson. There's like only two of us, and oh no, he's awake now. I guess. Sure. One, two. Three, my young friends. Six. A very exciting discovery, unimaginable up until only a few hours ago, has come into my hands and has finally allowed me to complete my study on the mysterious Yukol people. Lights, please. The Yukols are a people from the far north about whom very little is known. They live far away, very far away, on the frozen borders of Siberia. This distance and the climatic conditions of the region, which are unfavorable to human existence, have limited the size of the Yukol population and kept it out of reach of the scientific world. The handful of slides that follow are actually the only documentation we have in our possession. It was a Russian explorer who made these drawings and took these photographs a hundred or so years ago. Today, we owe what we know about the Yukol people and their culture to him. I barely hear you, dude. The origins of the Yukos date back to the last Ice Age. Curiously, evidence of their presence has been found in Western Europe, and more precisely, in the prehistoric caves at the heart of the Alps. These people, it seems, undertook a long migration over centuries towards the far north of the globe. The reasons for this migration are due to the importance of the mammoth in their craft, trade, and culture. They used them for transportation and as beasts of burden. The mammoth brought them meat, skins, fat, and ivory. Man and animal lived in symbiosis. There's no doubt about it. Mammoths started to drift away from the region due to changing climatic conditions, and the Yukos followed them to the north, to the edges of Siberia. Prehistoric cave drawings, identified as Yuko in origin, first led me to the extraordinary hypothesis that the Yukos had managed to domesticate the mammoth. They are, to the best of our knowledge, the only prehistoric people to represent a man riding a mammoth. <laughs> Today, because of this genuine mammoth skin effigy, identified by myself as an authentic Neolithic object, I can confirm this hypothesis. Yuko forebearers managed to tame mammoths. Prehistoric man uses little imagination. He draws what he sees and represents scenes from real life. This familiar day-to-day -day object is actually a children's toy. As we have seen, Yukol existence was inextricably linked to that of the mammoth. They used its skin for clothing and to make the roofs and walls of their houses. They used the tusks to build the frameworks of their homes as well as weapons, tools, and jewelry. Curiously, the disappearance of the mammoth 12,000 years ago had no immediate effect on the Yuko's way of life. It seemed that for a long time after, the people maintained their strong bond with the mammoth through the centuries. 
As incredible as it may seem, the Yuko people have continued right up until the start of this century to feed themselves on mammoth meat and to use the skin for clothing and shelter. Their ivory craftwork industry is still flourishing. It would appear that to preserve ancestral customs, the Yukos learned how to exploit through the centuries the large number of frozen mammoth carcasses that were perfectly preserved in the ice of the Siberian tundra. They have been able to live mainly off this enormous freezer stock for almost 30 centuries. As plausible as this explanation may seem, it seems it is not enough for the scientific community who, I will confess, is greatly perplexed by the question. In the absence of acceptable scientific evidence, we have to make the with yawning Yuko shaman artifacts. <laughs> the research department that I have the honor to represent today lends no credence to the myths and legends that these tribal charlatans peddle. We have to take their stories at face value. Mere tales to while away the long Siberian winter. The legend of the Siberian ice art is a very good example. You are invited to find out for yourselves from the pamphlet that I had passed around to you. This legend would have us believe that today, somewhere on a lost island to the north of Siberia, there are living mammoths still in existence, a sort of hangover from the Ice Age. This small herd has been miraculously preserved for more than 120 centuries by the Yukos tender king. The island on which the pachyderms are said to live is called Siberia. My friends, I advise you to resist the temptation you may have to believe in this pish and pish. The island of Siberia is not charted on any map, and the idea that mammoths have survived to the 21st century is an idle scientist's pipe dream. The Yukos were sadly among the first victims of the colonization of continental Siberia led by the Russians in the 20th century. The Kolkhoz and Sovkhoz systems, as well as the exploitation, disdain, and humiliation that people had to suffer, marked a definitive break in the Yukos' traditional lifestyle. And since the collapse of the communist regime, the Yuko population finds itself confronted with the same political and social upheavals that other Siberian communities are experiencing. There are two consequences to arise from this. Some Yukos have lost their tribal identity and have integrated into the Russian population. Others, however, have sought long and hard to re-establish links with their ancestral culture that was lost under the Soviet regime. Now, at the start of the 21st century, the last true surviving Yukos have gone to live on the vast territories of their ancestors. Nobody knows today where they live or how they survive. Their very existence would be a matter for speculation if they did not turn up periodically at the tundra's most isolated fur trading posts to exchange mammoth tusks for essential items. There ends my lecture for today. Thank you for being among us today, Miss Walker. Please make your way to the laboratory where you will find your mammoth doll. There are also photocopies of my lecture should you so require them. Kate picked the worst seat in the entire lecture hall with that f fan on the slide machine. Oh my lord. Crazy. Kate, you could have picked anywhere else. Look, at her, look where she sat, right in front of it. I could barely hear what he said. <sighs> Kate, you're silly.